was a shampoo bottle that was shaped as Sailor Moon and I had to have it. And then I had to figure out what it was from. And that's how I found out about Sailor Moon. I wish I still had that shampoo bottle because it was really cool. Hi everybody, I'm Anna from the Public Library. And today I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite genres, manga. So, manga has been super popular in the United States since about the 1990s. Uh, but we still get lots of questions about it at the library, so I'm here to help uh, explain what manga is and shed some light on the different categories that we have. So what exactly is manga? It's basically a form of a comic book. It's Japanese art in the form of storytelling. You can see it looks very similar to a comic book. There's a little bit of difference to it in that Japan has a very unique art style. So. Um, they tend to have very large eyes, and they tend to be very expressive, lots of different fun hair colors, lots of spiky hair, um, and there tends to be a lot of humor scattered throughout the books, even when it tends to be a serious subject. The other thing is that you'll notice that authentic manga is read from right to left because that's in Japan how they read. Um, and then lastly, if you notice that the style is very similar to cartoon that you've seen before, you're right. So manga is so popular that they often are made into cartoons called anime, and they tend to have multiple seasons throughout. Um, and we have also lots of anime at the library as well, if you're interested in that. So like, uh, like graphic novels and comic books, you don't have to be a kid to enjoy them. To be honest, most people are going to be teens and adults because most manga isn't aimed at just children. So you'll notice on the back of the books, there's going to be something like an age-breaking category. Um, so it may say A or T, and it'll let you know exactly um, what age it's uh, recommended for the patron to read, and so you can decide what one is the best for you. So let's go ahead and get started with the classics. Uh, regardless of what kind of genre you like, um, if you're interested in manga, you're going to want to know at least some of these titles. So again, in the 1990s is when manga really kicked off in America. You have your classics such as Dragon Ball Z, which is an action adventure fantasy series that has spun multiple sequels and is still ongoing today. Um, you also have Sailor Moon, which is personally one of my favorite mangas, and this basically has kickstarted the magical girl genre to make it still popular today. The 1990s aren't that long ago, even though that's 30 years ago, but <laughs> it really isn't that long. So let's go back even further to basically the beginning of manga and anime with Astro Boy. So this was released in the 1950s, and we actually have the comic book version available on Hoopla. So anybody can access it at any time with no wait. You can access it on your Kindle, your iPad, your phone, your computer, whatever you'd like. Um, Astro Boy basically came out in the 1950s as a manga, and then it was released in the 1960s as Japan's first black and white television animation show. So you basically heard me right, it's the first anime that was ever created because the style was so unique, it really lasted a long time. Um, and it basically set the standard for Japanese animation. Astro Boy is about a robot who has lots of adventures, mainly with his teacher slash detective in training, uh, Mr. Mustachio. And he goes and uses robot brains to help solve a lot of um, uh, mysteries and to put a lot of bad guys away. So a lot of people tend to really like Astro Boy because it's exciting, it's aimed at kids and adults, so anybody can read it. Um, it's very fun and fast paced and the story is really easy to understand. There's multiple volumes of it, but you don't have to read them all in order, which is really nice. So it's a good first beginning manga for uh, beginners, but then also it's great for people who really want to learn more about Japan and its history um, because it's one of the first mangas ever made and it was made right after World War II. So you can learn a little bit about Japan's history with that as well. So for the next category, I'm going to talk about romance, which is one of my favorite categories. Um, one of my favorite mangas is I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which is a very funny sounding title. And if you know anything about mangas, there are some very funny sounding titles for manga. 
It has nothing to do with zombies, and it's actually kind of a little bit of a sad story. But there's some humor interspersed throughout it as well. So this is actually a kind of shoujo manga, which means it's aimed at teenage girls because it has a little bit of a love story to it. So with the story, we have Yamauchi and Haruki, and they end up befriending each other because Haruki knows Yamauchi's secret that she has pancreatic cancer. And because it's a terminal illness, she creates a list of things she wants to do before she dies with the only friend who knows about her secret. So this story has a little bit of everything in it, um, a little bit of love, there's drama, there's humor. Um, it's also a very sad story, so you will cry <laughs> during it. But I really enjoy it. I also think the art is just really, really pretty. Um, and the characters are super expressive, which is really nice. The other great thing about this that makes it great for beginners is that this is a one-shot volume of manga. So it may look big, but compared to other mangas that have hundreds of volumes, this is the only thing you have to read to fully understand the story of this. And if you tend to like romance, other books that you might like, um, Sailor Moon and Auron High School Host Club and Fruits Basket. Fruits Basket is a great one because this recently was re-released as an anime um, because it was so popular. So if romance isn't really your style, you may like more of the shonen manga and that's going to be aimed more toward teenage boys because it has that action adventure um, category to it. Um, Naruto and Bleach tend to be very popular shonen manga. Um, some new ones that are recent releases are UQ Holder and Seraph of the End. These both have a little bit of a vampire twist to it, but most people tend to agree that if you can only read one manga in this category, it would be Full Metal Alchemist. So this came out in the mid 2000s and it basically made it so a lot of people who don't read manga became interested in reading manga. The story is very unique, the characters are super memorable, and it's just a, a great overall story. So we follow Ed and Al, who are brothers, as they look for the Philosopher's Stone. They basically need to find the stone because they use alchemy in their world, but they had an accident where they have lost part of their bodies in trying to bring their mo mother back to life, and they want to use the stone so they can return to their normal bodies. As you can see, Al is completely metal here. Um, this, the journey is very perilous. They have a lot of people who are trying to prevent them from getting the stone, including spirits who are embodiments of the seven deadly sins, which makes it a very unique storyline. Um, it's interesting because even though it's a very serious book, um, there's a lot of humor interspersed throughout it. The characters are great. The drawings are really fun. Um, and it's just, it's a really, really great storyline for a lot of people to get into, even if you're not big on action and adventure. So this brings us to our last category, and that's Kodamuke uh, manga, and that's aimed for children, um, but as I was saying earlier, a lot of uh, adults and teens can enjoy this kind of manga as well. So people tend to think of Pokemon when they think of kid manga, but there's other areas as well. We have Yotsuba, which is a really adorable story of a girl and her dad as they move to a new city. And then we also have a recent release of Anne of Green Gables. So this is a manga version of everyone's favorite childhood story. My personal favorite kid manga is Cheese Sweet Home and Cheese Sweet Adventures because I'm a big cat lover, so I'm definitely biased. Um, but I love the story because it's just so cute and wholesome. We basically follow this cat named Chi as she gets adopted into a family and all the adventures she goes on. This is a really great story for beginners um, because it's super expressive and colorful. Unlike other manga, Chi Sweet Home is completely in color and it's also read right to left like a regular American comic book, making it really easy for beginners to understand. So even if you don't like pets, you should definitely still check this out because it is just so sweet and wholesome. If you really like the art style of manga, but you're not sure you want to read through hundreds of different volumes, you can definitely try some of the anime that we have here at the library. I definitely recommend anything by Studio Ghibli or Hayao Miyazaki. Um, they're basically the Disney of anime. 
Uh, a lot of people will like their style even if they don't like anime. So Spirited Away is one of my personal favorites and it's won multiple awards. It's a great one. Uh, for those who like romance, Your Name is a recent release. It's really beautiful. I love the storyline and the art is fantastic. Um, for those who don't really like romance, Boy and the Beast is a great one as well. Lots of action and adventure in it and also a recent release. For those who really like classics and want to understand more about Japan, make sure to check out Ghost in the Shell and Lupin the Third. So that about wraps it up for me. What kind of manga are you interested in reading from this? Or if you're already a manga and anime fan and I didn't mention one of your favorites, make sure to comment it below so we can see what you're reading and make sure to follow us for more videos on your next great read. Bye. Have like an all time favorite anime mm -hmm. or manga? I don't know. I love Hell's Moving Castle. I like most Studio Ghibli movies. I like Wolf Children. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I really like Sailor Moon, but it's also kind of like it's a bias. Like, I understand that there's a lot of things wrong with it, but I still really like it. But Cardcaptor Sakura is really cute. I like that. That's probably my favorite, actually.